Fifty years ago, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin made history when they became the first humans to walk on the moon's surface. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Today, companies and governments are thinking about going back, but for a slightly different reason. They want to mine the moon. These organizations are working on technologies that can use raw resources from the lunar surface for everything from life support to rocket fuel. How feasible is this? And is it even legal? My name is Angel Abud Madrid. I'm the director of the Center for Space Resources at the Colorado School of Mines. We spoke with Angel Abud Madrid to learn more. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, lunar mining? This is an idea that's been around for a while. What has led to this resurgence of interest in mining the moon? The important thing to understand about space resources is, is the word space. These are resources that are in space and that we want to utilize in space. When we talk space resources, it's a variety of things that we can use from space. Some of them are concrete, like metals and oxygen and water, but some of them are intangible resources like solar energy, like microgravity, ultra high vacuums. You do not travel from Denver to New York City and bring a big tank of gas to get there and also to return. You refuel your vehicle as you go along and you use the resources in your, in your destination. Same thing in space. That idea has been around since the beginning of the space age in the 1960s when the NASA realized that if they were going to have humans on the surface of the moon, they would probably need some resources there, uh, for like example, oxygen to breathe or water to drink. During the Apollo years, that was not necessary because they were going to be there for just a few hours and then come back. But after that, that idea has stayed and now it's becoming more real and, and, and more important, especially if we're talking about staying there for weeks and months at a time. When a lot of people hear about lunar mining, the first thing that pops into their head is why go all the way to the moon when we have these resources on Earth? Do you think there's a strong economic case or perhaps even a political case to go to the moon to extract these resources? It's not about bringing the resources to Earth. It's about the, using the resources in space for space applications. Why? Because one of the most expensive things about uh, space exploration is transportation. Lifting up ourselves from the, from the ground it's an expensive and energy intensive operation. If we could find the propellant that we need in space so we don't have to carry it from Earth, that would be the way to go. You, you mentioned several different resources that could be found on the moon. Can you tell us a little bit about what those resources are? 45% of the moon is oxygen. Oxygen that is tied to the rocks. We can use it for breathing or uh, as a propellant. The regions on the poles of the moon that have never seen the light of the sun, they have accumulated water from comets and asteroids that have deposited the ice there and that can be utilized for water, for drinking purposes, or growing plants, or split into hydrogen and oxygen, which is the most energetic rocket propellant known. There's uh, metals uh, all over the, the surface. Could be iron, could be titanium, aluminum, magnesium, all of those metals that we use for construction and for making parts. It's also silicon, silicon that it's important for making uh, uh, solar cells. The other element that is important is just the lunar soil itself. This will be good for construction, for habitats, could be used for 3D printing if you want to have tools, spare parts. So that's another very important uh, resource. The moon presents several challenges that aren't found on Earth. It has a low gravity environment, um, very harsh radiation, extremely low temperatures and extremely high temperatures. So how are engineers thinking about overcoming these challenges? Most of the, of the operations at the beginning will be done robotically. We won't have humans on the surface. So we will have to have either remotely controlled or fully autonomous machines. Uh, they will have to be small because we are only limited to a certain mass that we can get to the moon. With a reduced gravity level, your traction goes down a little bit. In terms of power, we have solar power. So we will have to learn how to capture that or provide other sources of energy such as nuclear power. And what is the status of these robots right now? Is this something that actually exists and is ready to, to fly next year or is this still mostly science fiction? And just like on Earth, it goes through a sequence of operations. First is the exploration, identification of the resource. Then you're gonna extract, process, manufacture. We're gonna go by the same sequence that we follow on Earth. So identifying the resources is, is expected to happen in the next two to five years. In fact, there are already payloads that are being uh, planned for the next couple of years that will carry to the moon 
some uh, instruments to identify the resource. How much oxygen do we have? How much water is on those permanently shadow regions of the moon? Those will be followed in the, the next five years and beyond by demonstrations of technology. Now let's demonstrate the technology. We know where the resource is. Let's see how much oxygen we can extract, how we can store it. This will be done at a scale in which at the same time that we're demonstrating the technology, it can start being used by humans that will be on the surface of the moon. And it coincides nicely with plans to have humans by 2024 and beyond. Large scale operations, when once we start setting plants that will uh, collect oxygen and metals and water at scales in which we will need it for a uh, large production of propellants and the like, that's more than the 10 to 15 years. But uh, a lot is needed to be done before you do that. Several technologies have been developed to a point of a prototype. Some of those things can be ready to be tested. Other things will require further technology development as we learn more and more the state of the resource and the technology that will be needed to extract it. So it sounds like there's going to have to be some exploratory missions to find where these resources are, um, what are the best regions to extract them from. Is this something that you think is going to be undertaken by governments first, or do you think corporations and private interests are going to be leading the uh, lunar gold rush, so to speak? This is something that most probably will be accomplished by governments, by space agencies that are interested on in these resources for exploration and, and for sustaining humans the private space sector can come in to help on the technologies that will be used to excavate it, to extract them. Companies on Earth have plenty of experience here and they can be utilized by our space agency to continue with extraction of, uh, of elements. One of the major stumbling blocks to actually bringing this into reality is going to be policy. And so I was curious to know, is mining the moon even legal? The Outer Space Treaty that was uh, signed and ratified by more than 100 countries, specifically stated a country cannot own any celestial body. But left out was the possibility to extract the resources without owning the planetary body. Two countries have already taken a unilateral approach to this. Uh, first, the United States in 2015 with the Commercial Space Act. Uh, it makes it clear that any company that resides in the United States can go ahead and extract the resources. That was followed by Luxembourg in Europe. The rest of the world is also asking how is that everybody can get involved so that minimize conflicts. So all of those questions are now uh, out there in terms of the legal and they will have to be settled before we also go out and extract uh, resources in a large scale. We may use them at the beginning if, if, uh, if uh, humans have to survive there for a few weeks, we may extract the oxygen uh, we actually been there. I mean, the United States have been there without claiming uh, ownership of the moon. And so the same thing will happen at the beginning with some resources that will be essential for just survival. But when we start extracting it on a large scale, we will have to come up with a, a coherent legal framework. With mining on Earth, environmental groups take it very seriously. Um, a lot of people say it defaces the Earth. Uh, and this is conceivably something that could happen on the moon if these operations get to become large scale, it might deface the moon. Is this something that organizations that are pursuing resource extraction in space are thinking about? And how might we minimize uh, the effects on the lunar environment? The moon has been an object of adoration for millennia and for all cultures. Uh, we see very clearly the moon is probably is the only object that we see in a large scale. There's been other concerns about the impact on historic places like Apollo 11 and how mining operations are going to affect that. So there's definitely an environmental uh, component. That's not going to be an issue. I mean, the, the mining operations we're talking about to sustain humans are minuscule to anything that we have on Earth. Uh, when we talk about mining water from the lunar poles, we're going to be extracting water from a place that not only we cannot see, it has not seen the light of the sun for billions of years. So you will never get to see what happens in there. And we're talking at a very small operation to conduct the exploration that we want to do in the, you know, several decades from now. At some point, if this becomes large enough that you have uh, large operations that will require a lot of excavation and extraction, there may be an effect by then. But that's something that will have to be considered, again, just like the legal aspects how much we want to uh, have this done or where should it happen so that it doesn't cause uh, raise any, any more concerns. Angel, thank you so much for joining us today and telling us more about how we're going to mine the moon. 
It is a pleasure to be here, Daniel, to uh, share some of what is uh, happening on uh, plans to extract resources from the moon and beyond.